Hello, this is Craig, and I wanted to show you where things stood with the avatar creation tool. I'm going to show you the uh, layered clothes and skin creation set I, I, I just made. Um, and this is sort of a, as I move forward, this will be the past. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to go ahead and give this character a different skin texture. I'm going to go ahead and give him the skin texture of corduroy. Ah, what the heck, I'll leave it as blue. I can change the color, but I'll do that in something else just to show you that it can be done. So I'm painting this character up with a skin texture. And as you can see, it's actually a texture. It's not just it's not just a flat color. Now, in the long run, there will be some kind of fill bucket or something, but for now, you got to do it by hand. All right, so we now have this uh, character who's been reskinned to be um, bumpy, and you may ask, why did you do that? Well, mostly just because I want to show off a couple of other things. Uh, for example, I'm going to go into paint mode. I mean, I'm going to go out of paint mode and into wrinkle mode, and I'll just give our guy a scar or two just to show you that I can. I'm going to narrow the brush width with the mouse wheel because otherwise it'll be a big ass scar. I'm going to hold shift and just cut into his face. And I'm going to go down here and give him a bigger one. And then I'm going to... Um, there we are. I'm going to go ahead and make that one have like a little cross. So there, now we've got a unique base skin layer, and I'm going to hit tab to save it to our character. This takes a considerable amount of time because this, the Hyatt map is quite, quite a bit more complex than normal, but that's okay. So now we've got a character like this. Let's go ahead and um, put a t-shirt on him. We'll make it out of silk, but let's go ahead and make the silk green. So whoop, I... Uh, There we are. This is actually a very bright green. I probably wanted something duller, but whatever. And now, as before, I, I should go ahead and paint the back, but I'm not going to. Um, and then I'll hit Tab. Oh, actually, I want to go back into wrinkle mode for this uh, and show you that you can do wrinkles that look... Wrinkles are actually intended to be used like this to make it so that the detail on the... Uh, these non-mesh modifying clothes still look like mesh modifying clothes. And uh, it doesn't look too bad, so you know you just lay them down as you prefer it. Mm. Use a combination of normal click and shift click to create all of the creases you'd like in all the patterns you want. And you can also use it to create hems like this. All right, now we hit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add in just a little bit of um, metal here. Oh, I'm in wrinkle mode. So you can see that you can pretty quickly create unique clothes as you prefer. Um, and the bump mapping is good enough that it looks pretty convincing, even though the mesh is not being modified. There we are. So now we hit tab to save that shirt as a shirt. And now that our character is actually wearing it, you can see that it inherits both his skin pattern and his scar pattern, blurred, uh, blurred and muted slightly because it's a you know a layer below. And you can continue to do this basically forever. So if we if we were to, to add a layer of metal here. Um, I need a thicker brush than that. A layer of metal here, give him a little bit of a breastplate or something. Um, then this would also layer just fine. And we can, you know, put in some 
Oh, I guess we were using silk before, weren't we? Go ahead and put in some spandex then. Um, you know, just do it however you'd like and make your character look like whatever you want. And then... Oh, by the way, the materials, while I showed you, uh, you know, a changing... You know, you can change the color of the material like this. Um, you can also limit that or change it by either using a different um, materials... or sorry, a different palette image or by simply saying there is no palette. So I can't change metal, for example, um, because the only metal I allow is gold. And that allows you to control your the clothing in your particular game. So you could assign various materials as prestige materials or whatever. Now I save it. There you go. So as you can see, the metal is very, very rigid, and there's none of the, none of the bump mapping from the lower layers shines through. But uh, these here, you can still see the, the faint image of the uh, lower layers. Now how much you want that to shine through and what sort of things you want to aim for will depend on your specific artistic needs. But at its heart, this allows you to create unique costumes for a large number of characters in a short amount of time as well as allowing you to use those unique costumes cross avatar. So for example, I could go ahead and drag any layer of this clothing over to some other avatar and it would work fine. Um, and uh, similarly, if, uh, if I am running game A and some of the people in my game, you know, earn a magic armor set that looks cool, and game B comes online and the game B person's like, sure, you can just play whoever you want in my game, then they could import that same character with the same armor. Or Game B might say, well, I don't want them to have access to things that look like armor because it's like a, you know, a space game or something. So no, uh, no, no such things should be allowed. And he can just say, well, they can only use clothes from my game, but they can still import their avatar. So those are the sort of considerations I have. And moving forward, this is, I wouldn't call it complete, but I would call it pretty stable. Um, on the other hand, what I really have to do next is the mesh modification so you can change how your character is shaped. I've already got the basics of that down with the blend key um, character generation tools, which you saw a while back, where you can select how beefy you are, how feminine, etc. Um, this would be that, except you'd actually make the blend keys here in Unity by inflating or deflating pieces of the mesh. And from that, I can launch into um, mesh modification tools that create vertexes for things like uh, sleeves and skirts and hair. Um, so yeah, a busy couple of weeks ahead of me, but I thought you might want to see, you know, the base, what I had gotten done.